Today I'm going to show you how to create high availability DHCP failover using lease replication in Windows Server 2012. Uh, before Server 2012, if you wanted highly available DHCP, you either needed to do split scope, which was kind of ugly, or uh, DHCP clustering, which was overkill in a lot of instances. So uh, this is a nice happy medium. It's something that uh, ISC DHCPD has had for a long time, and lease replication is very welcome uh, in the Microsoft world. So I'll show you how to configure that. First, I want to show you I have a Windows 8 client right here. So if I do ipconfig, you can see that I have a 169.254 uh, self-assigned IP address. Uh, obviously, I don't have any DHCP active uh, right now. So we'll hop over to the management server. And this is just a server where I have the DHCP console installed, and I have both servers pulled up already. Uh, you could do these steps uh, just as easily right from the DHCP server yourself, but central management is one of the core tenets for server 2012 so that's how I'm gonna do a lot of these videos from here on out is from you know centralized consoles wherever possible so uh, you know I already have two DHCP servers I've already authorized them but I have not created any scopes uh, and I added them to the console so that's that's where you are that's very basic stuff very easy to get to uh, and so for here what we'll do is we'll go to IPv4 and we want to make uh, a new scope and we'll just call this lab because this is in my lab environment type in your IP info for whatever scope you want to configure I'm only going to do 10 addresses in production you'll probably have more but I don't need it uh, I don't need any exclusions I don't need any delays the least duration I'll make two days it doesn't matter you can do whatever is appropriate for your environment and I'll just configure the standard options. I'll configure my gateway. It'll automatically fill in my uh, my only Active Directory domain controller right now uh, in this lab environment. If you have additional DNS servers, you can put them there. It's just like creating any other DHCP scope up to this point so far. No wins because it's not 1999. And yes, I want to activate this scope. So right now you'll see I have this scope. And I have uh, I will have an IP address very shortly on this computer. Yes, yeah, so you'll see right here actually I have 182.168.210.100 and if I go over to my leases and do a refresh that'll show up there but now I want to replicate this to another server right to this 210.52 server down here so to do that I can either do it at the scope level or if I had multiple scopes and wanted to replicate a bunch at once you can do it from this node so from here you can right click and do create or configure failover or from down here you can configure failover just for that one scope I'll do it from up here and this is how you would do it from the IPv4 or IPv6 node in the snap in if you want to do it from more than one. So we'll we'll run through that. This just takes a second to pop up because it's connecting to the remote computer. So just give it one second here. And you'll see it shows available scopes and I can do a select all here. So if I had, you know, fifty or a hundred scopes or whatever, this was some deployment that was already out there. It's very easy to make everything highly available. Uh, so I'll select this partner server for failover you might have to type yours in there if you don't have a previously existing relationship alright so I need to create a failover relationship with the partner and I'll just call this HQ replication you can leave all these defaults in place if you don't have a need to tweak them no need to um, load balance mode versus hot standby mode. Hot standby mode will mean that um, pretty much all of it, the only time that the second server will give an address in hot standby mode is if the first server is offline. 
So, you know, in most cases, load balance mode is fine unless you have a reason for hot standby mode. In this case, you know, it'll be 50-50 roughly. And we'll do enable message authentication. This just basically is for the least replication so that anybody without this secret can't join this replication group. That's, you know, security feature so that you can't put bogus leases in uh, into the lease table. So, uh, in reality, you'll want this shared secret to be much longer. This is just for a demo. So we'll hit finish, finish, and you'll see successful and you can close. And now if we go down to here and do a refresh, and this just takes a minute to come up, you'll see the scope is automatically created down here and the lease was replicated so I can see the lease here and I can see the lease here on both servers so that's where this is different from before you either had you know to do Windows failover cluster or you had to do split scope where the leases weren't replicated in this case the address pool you'll notice the 100 to 110 is the same on both servers. You no longer have to split scope and the leases themselves are replicated so there's no chance that you'll accidentally have conflicting IP addresses because the scope is configured across you know the same scope I should say is configured across two servers. So it should be pretty obvious that a high, highly available DHCP uh, got a big upgrade in server 2012 and it's very easy to configure so I hope that you guys go out and deploy this everywhere in every environment because it's very low load, very lightweight, and it's